welcome to Jam Chem. Now today's video is on chemistry in daily life part five video, and here we are going to deal with vitamins, oils, fats, soaps, and detergents. Now before starting, already four videos on chemistry in daily life are uploaded in channel. You can watch it. I will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video. So what are vitamins? We already know these are the essential part of our diet and the vitamins are classified into fat soluble vitamins and water soluble vitamins in the fat soluble vitamins you can see a d e and k are fat soluble whereas for water soluble vitamins those are b and c groups so when we talk about vitamins we are going to see the major sources scientific name importance in body and deficiency disease so for vitamin a retinol is the scientific name and the deficiency disease is night blindness similarly for b1 thiamine is the name beriberi is the deficiency disease for vitamin c you can see ascorbic acid is the name and scarvy is caused by its deficiency the sources are being provided you can see from the video only and for vitamin d you have calciferol rickets is the cause and it is generally occurring in the children and there bones become softened and out of shape similarly for vitamin e we have scientific name tocopherol and it causes mild hemolytic anemia when not present in sufficient amount vitamin k is phyloquinone and it is causing spontaneous bleeding if not available in appropriate amount now the structures are very important for vitamins if you consider the first structure is of vitamin a and the second one is of vitamin b1 third one you can see it is of vitamin c next vitamin d this one is your vitamin a and vitamin k1 so these structures can be asked to draw so you have to be careful about that how to draw next we come to oils and fats so first the syllabus shows us that we need to know the composition of edible oils so in that case edible oil consists of saturated fatty acids where there is no double bonds present monounsaturated fatty acids where one double bond is present and polyunsaturated fatty acids where two or more double bonds are present in the hydrocarbon chain other components include phospholipids sterols tocopherols free fatty acids and if you see the compositions of different oil types then you can see that saturated fatty acid monounsaturated fatty acids and polyunsaturated fatty acids have different compositions now we go for our detection of purity and rancidity of fats and oils so pureness and freshness are two crucial factors for fats and oils so to check purity we have two types of test one is physical test and another is your chemical test so when we talk about physical test we have uh, tests using refractive index so in that case we are going to measure the bending of light through the oil in order to understand the adulteration present in case of viscosity also resistance of oil to flow this also helps us to see what type of oil it is specific gravity determines the density of the oil and helps us to detect the adulteration with lighter oils now chemical tests include saponification value which helps us to determine the average molecular weight of fatty acid present iodine value helps us to understand what is the amount of unsaturation present in your oil or fat and rickert measel value this type of test helps us to understand that what is the amount of water soluble fatty acids in butter fat and helps us to detect the adulteration in the butter fat when we talk about rancidity test there are two types of test one is sensory evaluation where we check appearance odor test and the next one is chemical test where we use peroxide value so measurement of amount of peroxide helps us to detect that if there is higher amount of peroxide the fat is higher amount of rancid acid value helps us to determine the amount of free fatty acid present and it is a sign of hydrolytic rancidity thiobarbituric acid reactive substance test helps us to measure the formation of malonaldehyde which is a breakdown product of lipid oxidation higher its value which indicates increased amount of rancidity 
other methods which we can generally use are chromatographic techniques spectroscopy but the previous ones are more important now we come for the test for argimone oil adulteration so two types of tests are available nitric acid test ferric chloride test in nitric acid test it is a sensitive test where few drops of nitric acid is added to the sample as a result of which there is a formation of crimson red or deep orange red color within 20 to 30 seconds this is due to the reaction between the nitric acid and your sanguinorine which is present in your argimone oil next we have ferric chloride test where you can see that a few drops of ferric chloride solution is being added into the oil sample once you add the red color indicates the presence of argimone oil next we are going to test for mineral oil adulteration so we have few tests where the important ones are Bailstein test sulfuric acid test and fluorescence test so in Bailstein's test we are going to use a copper wire which is heated in a flame then the wire is dipped into the oil sample and placed back into the flame so if you see a persistent green flame then it indicates that there is some mineral oil that there is some mineral oil present in it now when we talk about sulfuric acid test few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid are added to the oil sample and there is a formation of dark brown or black colored substance which indicates presence of mineral oil similarly fluorescence test will help us to identify mineral oil because it will fluoresce in uv light while most vegetable oils will not other methods in this case also you have chromatographic technique and spectroscopy where spectroscopy has specific spectroscopy under it that is ir and nir so we have to be very careful while consuming the oils because they can be adulterated by different substances and these adulterations can cause your health issues like argimone oil can cause blindness and liver damage next we come for very important part that is halfen test this halfen test helps us to determine the presence of cottonseed oil in any other fats or oils so we have to first prepare the reagent which is halfen reagent we take 1 gram of sulfur and dissolve it in 100 ml of carbon disulfide then mix equal volumes of amyl alcohol to it after mixing we mix that volume to the oil sample and heat the mixture in the boiling water bath then we observe the color change if you have cotton seed oil present then the mixture will turn reddish orange or red the intensity of the color will indicate the presence of amount of cotton seed oil you can see the principle is based on reaction between cyclopropenoid fatty acid which is found in cotton seed oil with the presence of sulfur in amyl alcohol under heating condition sensitivity helps us to detect as little as 0.5 percent of your cotton seed and the limitations is that this gives positive results with other oils containing cyclopropanoid fatty acid like hemp seed oil kapok seed oil etc application is it helps us to detect adulteration and helps to control the quality of the product now we are going to see about the soap and detergent which is the last part of our discussion so in case of soaps and detergents we need to know first the definition so it is typically soap made up of salt or fatty acid or oil with an alkali and detergent is a synthetic cleaning agent which are typically derived from petroleum or other chemical sources for soap manufacturing we are going to need raw material preparation which includes fats and oils where from where we are refining it to remove the impurities alkali as well and saponification includes that fats and oils are heated and mixed with alkali solution so that this re uh, chemical reaction called saponification is done this breaks down fats into fatty acids and glycerols then again fatty acids are being reacted with alkali to form soap now if we consider the soap mixture the soap mixture is allowed to settle down and soap cards rise to the top the liquid portion contains glycerol and is drawn off the soap card is washed with salt water and excess alkali is being removed and with it we are adding some fragrances colors and antiseptics then the soap is dried milled and shaped into bar or other forms 
Next we have detergent manufacturing. So this includes raw materials as petrochemicals, other ingredients includes builders, enzymes, bleaches and other additives. Now how to produce the surfactant? Petrochemicals are made to undergo different chemical reactions so that they can produce surfactants, the main cleaning agent of the detergent. Then different types of surfactant we know that they have different properties affecting the detergent's cleaning power and other characteristics. Then formulation is that surfactant is combined with other ingredients and this process involves mixing, heating and drying. Finally, we have finishing stage where final detergent is packed and distributed. Manufacturing difference between soap and detergents is that raw material difference, chemical reaction difference and additive difference. So what are the components present in a soap? That must be understood. So primary component in a soap is a fatty acid and an alkali and they have a unique structure with a head and tail. Their head is actually hydrophilic that is it is attracted by the water whereas the tail is hydrophobic. Other ingredients which are generally present are surfactants, humectants, fragrances, colorants, antibacterial agents and emulsions. Now these specific compositions can vary from soap to soap. And if we consider the detergents, detergents main part or the core component is made up of surfactant which is the workhorse of our detergent. They have also unique structure which is hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. And this structure allows surfactant to reduce the surface tension of the water, emulsify oil and grease and other ingredients includes which, uh, other ingredients include which we have already seen in the previous part. Builders, enzymes, bleaches, optical brighteners, fragrances, dyes, foam boosters and foam suppressors. Foam booster increases the amount of foam produced by detergent. Foam suppressor reduces the amount of foam produced by detergents. And optical brighteners helps us to absorb UV light and remit the visible light so that fabric can appear whiter and brighter. So specific composition again it can vary and last is our uses of soap and detergent which we already know no need for discussion. So here ends the topic of your module 2 that is vitamins, oils, fats, soaps and detergents. Hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe and comment. Mm -hmm.